getting to that point in the year where normally we start to see things for the next Call of Duty start to come out, but we're not quite there just yet. And there's a reason to that, but today we're going to take some time and break down everything that we know about regarding Call of Duty 2021, Sledgehammer's next introduction into the Call of Duty franchise, and the project we have up on deck for this fall. So as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. Is there anything that you guys hope comes true out of this information, these reports we've seen so far, anything you guys would like to see for 2021's COD, whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you do, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Call of Duty, including Call of Duty 2021 information. If you're interested in staying up to date with all of it and joining the community, I'd love to have you. That said, let's jump right into it. So first and foremost, probably the most shocking of information, there is a Call of Duty coming within this year in 2021, later this fall. That I know is crazy information, but that was confirmed earlier on in the year via Investor Call, despite the rumors that the title was potentially getting canceled or delayed. Those rumors do persist, and we truly won't know the scope of it likely ever, but the intended target of Q4, as always, is still intact with Activision and the release of the upcoming project. When it comes down to it, what we know about said project is that, firstly, Sledgehammer's working on this title. It's their own full project, something that is coming off what was rumored to be a rocky relationship with Raven producing Black Ops Cold War, but they now have the reins and they are running the show here for COD 2021. Now, Sledgehammer being confirmed as the lead developer is actually something that's relatively recent in the development of the story. It was rumored that they would be the developer, but chronologically speaking, this is one of the newer bits of information that was confirmed and came out in regards to this 2021 project. Now, as for the title and era here, initially it was reported by known leaker Victor Z that the game was in development by Sledge, indicated by a hammer emoji, which was, again, new information at the time, and then a picture followed up by Call of Duty World War II, one of the key art images here for 2017's title. And as a clarification, someone asked if this would be a World War III style game, to which he replied, World War II. Now, that rumor was something that was in place for a while, and still to this day actually is, to much credit of Victor, who accurately leaked a ton of information regarding Cold War and other things in the past, even so much so as including small, minute details to things like that there would be a 10-second MP preview at the end of last year's reveal trailer for Black Ops Cold War in late August. Now, that story then unfolded a bit further, as initially reported by Modern Warzone, that the game apparently was under development code name of Call of Duty World War II Vanguard. Another heck of a long title, Black Ops Cold War, this past year. That, from a content creation side of things, has been kind of a nightmare for SEO and hitting those things that Google likes. Like, do you go with Cold War, Black Ops, Black Ops Cold War, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War? Anyways, content creation problems aside, it's not the cleanest sounding branding, but it was what was being initially reported. This was then also later corroborated and followed up by initial nods of approval from Eurogamer sources as well in relation to the topic of the name. But when it comes to that era, this is what it's definitely hit or miss. I feel like I'm kind of in the minority when I say that I quite enjoyed my time in Call of Duty World War II back in 2017 and 2018, but at the same time, I would be entirely cool with not returning to that era, simply based on how limiting in nature that World War II has been in relation to direction. Unless it's rooted in a historical fiction, taking an alternate approach to the war, potentially a la Man in the High Castle where the outcome was different, or the conflict kept going, which was already rumored to be not the case, that then makes it something that is more so based in a revered nature, something of a more gritty design and storytelling, which ultimately in today's industry, I don't know if that holds up well for longevity. People like eye-popping things, things that catch their attention, and a lot of World War II is the dirty side of war. And as stupid and obvious as that sounds, it doesn't make for super eye-catching items or anything like that, which Call of Duty has done in the past here. But that may just be me, and perhaps you disagree, totally fine if so. But an interesting twist is that while those sources confirmed the matching info on the name, the alternate history stuff was actually up for debate, as one side said yes, one side said no. So we'll have to see how that goes, but I'm not getting my hopes up for one way or the other. I'm just kind of taking it at a glance. Now, outside of the era game development side, that's where things are also nice to learn about a little bit further, because while confirming their status in the captain's chair for development, Activision's chief operating officer also stated of Sledgehammer that we are very excited for this year's premium Call of Duty release. Development is being led by Sledgehammer Games, and the game is looking great and on track for its fall release. This is a built-for-next-generation experience with stunning visuals 
visuals across campaign, multiplayer, and cooperative modes of play, designed to both integrate with and enhance the existing COD ecosystem. We look forward to sharing more details with the community soon. Now, that statement alone gives a few things. Number one, it gave us a scale and standard as to what we should expect for the development of the game. Next generation is what's in mind first, though not only limited to that, so you can expect to see your Xbox Ones and PlayStation 4s still have some support and a version of the game coming to it, though likely marking the start of a countdown timer for how long they have left. Perhaps this game and the next are the last of the console generation if the past console generation shift nearly a decade ago was any indication. Installing Ghosts, Advanced Warfare, and Black Ops 3 in increasingly different iterations of the titles across the console generation divide. I just personally hope that we don't see a disconnect like we saw so far to the point of Black Ops 3. If you guys remember, the Black Ops 3 last gen version looked and ran terribly, not running at a full 60 FPS in MP, and even so much so to go as locked 30 FPS for zombies, not having a campaign, not having any DLC past DLC 1, it wasn't really a good site. So personally, I'd love to see a natural Modern Warfare 2 introduced while being worked on exclusively for next gen, just so that the consumer doesn't have to have any massive cuts into that just to say they had the game on that last generation. I'd like to see that happen maybe with Modern Warfare 2. Again, you guys are totally welcome to disagree on that, but you can expect a next generation experience first. So hopefully that means things like an FOV slatter will be returning and come into play as introduced with Black Ops Cold War. But the second bit of this statement did confirm the fact that we'll see a full three main modes for Call of Duty 2021. There was a lot of speculation about what was going to happen here, born out of the rumors that the development of the game was in turmoil. And while talking about things we know for sure and what is credibly reported, I don't think we can really dive too deep into that other than the fact that we're probably never going to know the true story. Obviously, if that is the case, Activision will never want to let on to that. They want to instill confidence in their investors, so they're never actually going to say that outright officially. But there were rumors that a campaign would be missed and other things here and there, but it does confirm that we'll end up seeing all three. What is interesting, though, is that the campaign, while that does look to be a stable constant here with this game, the zombies is one thing that is still in question with rumors and reports coming out about this, because it seems like zombies will be returning as the co-op mode in COD 2021, but what was postulated by the leaker group, the Cheeseburger Boys, is that Treyarch will actually be taking the reins on the co-op and zombies side, bringing what we see here and continuing it over into COD 2021, in which they propose that information. There's no indication officially if that's the case or not yet, but it could be something that is the reason for some seemingly disjointed release and development of zombies content this year. And I don't know if it's just me, but I think it'd be kind of cool to see one sort of zombies universe since we're trying to make Call of Duty all one universe with Black Ops Cold War tying together Modern Warfare, the new Modern Warfare in with the existing Black Ops universe. Maybe that happens here and then, so maybe the entire zombie storyline can continuously get updated and go year to year instead of having disjointed pieces and different storytelling universes told by different studios. It'd be kind of cool to see if you ask me, but that crossover then could potentially start to sow the seeds of a potential uniform experience with Call of Duty working all on the same tool sets as COD 2021 is reportedly working on the Infinity Ward engine, the same that we see with Modern Warfare 2019 and with Warzone. So that is something that, again, will probably be a hit or miss. I know a lot of people, myself included, really liked the mechanics of Modern Warfare. I can't really get the hang of Black Ops Cold War now unless I sit down and actually put like days into it so that I'm fully immersed in it once again, but playing Warzone so much, it's just a weird shift and transition over, but that's being proposed as well. And talking about integration here with Warzone, that is something that is rumored to be uncertain or potentially not even happening, though you could probably discount that and not really take that as credible information because it was later confirmed that, that won't be the case. How though, that's the next interesting part here, because if we see things like flashback stories keep happening here, we're just going to eventually keep flashing between time periods, and that'll be an interesting gameplay experience. But as for weaponry, I don't know how that's going to work, man. I mean, World War II weapons mixed in with modern weaponry, that from a narrative perspective doesn't make a whole ton of sense, but I guess would happen. Stranger things have happened already within Call of Duty and Warzone, but as for the final thing we'll talk about here and the final things that we know about in relation to COD 2021, that reveal window. This is something that is likely a little further out than we may consider, though a leak did propose recently, brought up by Zesty Cod Leaks, that there could be a potential reveal event within Season 4. 
How likely that is though, that is up for discussion because by comparison, Black Ops Cold War's reveal last year happened in game on August 26th of last year, which was during season five of Modern Warfare. It was also confirmed by Activision that Call of Duty is kind of leading towards a later reveal period here in the year. Later, calendar wise, for showing bits and pieces and teasers here and there up to a full reveal. Warzone has kind of dedicated a lot of its own time to it because we're seeing this sort of offsetting six months that we'd normally have beforehand where a game is released. Six months later, the next game is revealed. Six months after that, the game then that was revealed is released and so on and so forth. But with Warzone kind of taking that five to six month mark afterwards, that then has to push that spotlight a little further back. So that is something that season four could potentially happen but I don't quite know if that will be the case. Maybe like an end of season four event leading into season five may make sense, but I think that we may end up seeing something more so like Black Ops Cold Wars marketing and reveal period like last year happen again this year. Late August with a reveal, early September, mid-September with an MP reveal and a beta then to follow, and then less time you really have to wait on to get the product in your hand only a couple of months after that. But right now, that is everything that we know about within Call of Duty 2021 and the prospect of it. So that said, that is where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of this here? Are you guys looking forward to anything in particular? Are you hoping that any of this comes true? Hoping any of it deviates a little bit and we get some different information that conflicts with it? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the single thing reading all things Call of Duty, especially Call of Duty 2021 as we ramp up here in the next couple of months to learning everything that we will need to know before the launch of the game later this fall. If you're interested, hit that subscribe button. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with outside of YouTube. Practice them on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.